So you want to start that passion project, side hustle, or expand your current business, and you want to use a free and powerful open source content management system, but you don't know which one to choose. In this training, we're going to go over the basics of a content management system and do a comparison between the two most popular CMS platforms, WordPress and Joomla. In this training, I hope that you're gonna get all the information you need to make a decision on what content management system that you can use to build your project with. So let's get started. So let's first define what a training content management system is. A content management system or a CMS is an online software platform used to create, manage, and display digital content, typically on websites without requiring advanced coding skills. That includes all the heavy hitters like WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal, and a bunch of others that have their own niche and are quite capable in their own right. Now, why would you ever wanna pick up one of these content management systems? And it's because you wanna promote yourself online, start a passion project, a side hustle, or expand your current business. Here's just a small list of projects that you could tackle, anything from a product catalog to an online community to a membership site. People are using open source content management systems every day to build and manage their thriving online projects. Before we get into comparing different CMS applications, let's cover some of the CMS basics. Every content management system has an administration backend. That's where you're gonna be managing your content settings, users, and site functionality. And then of course you have the front end of your website. That's where your visitors are gonna navigate through your site, seeing your content laid out in a design. Everybody knows what the front end of a website looks like, so I wanted to quickly show you what the administrative back end looks like. So here on the left, you have WordPress, and on the right, you have Joomla. You can see that there's a lot of settings here that are gonna control everything on your site, from user permissions, to plugins, to templates, to your site pages, and how those site pages are displayed on the front end. Now there's a couple other concepts that we need to review. And the first one is that your content management system runs off of a database. That's where all your website information, your articles, images, and everything is stored in that database. And then you have the content of that database being rendered or displayed. The rendering of this content is going to be controlled by your administrative backend and displayed through your site's template layout. Now your content management system has two different types of pages. And if you're a visitor to a site, it would be really difficult to tell which is which. But as I explained, you're gonna see some real fundamental differences. The first one is a static page. A static page is displayed exactly as it's stored on the server, typically used for rarely updated content like home or about pages. The components of a static page include a set content structure. So you've specified in advance that you want exactly this headline here and this photo here and this text here. The next is the theme. That's going to control the look and feel of your site, what fonts you use, what colors you use, the kind of graphics. And lastly, you have modules or widgets that can be embedded into static pages that's going to add site functionality or display dynamic content. And remember, the defining quality of a static page is that these pages are stored on the server. When a visitor comes to your site, the server serves up the stored content exactly how you designed it. Now, the next type of page in a content management system is a dynamic page. A dynamic page is generated in real time by combining database content with your template, enabling a personalized or frequently updated content like blogs or product catalogs. The contents of a dynamic page are first the stored content that's inside of your database that is going to use the template of your site to dynamically display content within a predefined layout. You can think of dynamic pages like this. Let's say you have thousands of products and you've defined inside of your template that you want the title to be displayed at the top and the description right below that. You're not building individual pages for each product, but you're defining a template that each one of these products are going to use. And because you're creating templates for your database content, these individual product pages do not exist on the server, but rather are dynamically generated when a visitor navigates through your site. 
Now I want to show you a couple of examples of static and dynamic pages on a website. For static pages, it's really common to see like the home page, the about us, or the come work with us pages as static pages. And these are designed once without the expectation that they're going to change much over time. You may have modules and widgets that are embedded into these static pages that will display things like latest blog posts that will give these static pages the feel of a dynamic page. Dynamic pages are used where you have a lot of the same type of content. Maybe those are blog posts, event pages, staff directories, or as you can see here, a product catalog. You can set the template for the content type category. Here you can see it's for kids two to six years old, or you can set the template for each individual type of product. Every CMS comes with a default template or theme that no one uses. So when you set up your CMS, you're gonna be installing a template or theme framework. This is actually a really powerful feature of content management systems. You can think of these frameworks as an app that sits on top of your content management system that's gonna give you access to advanced design features without needing to use any code. All the frameworks are gonna have different feature sets, but they all typically will have a drag and drop layout builder. That's where you can visually arrange the page elements on the front end of your website. That's gonna be for both static and dynamic pages. They're also gonna have add-ons or widgets that's gonna give you the ability to display content in interesting ways like sliders, galleries, or accordions. You can use these template frameworks to set up your dynamic and static pages without needing to use any code. Now you will be using a template or theme that will control the look of your site, but one layer down is the actual framework. So the common frameworks that your templates and themes are built on top of are like Bootstrap, UIKit, Divi, or Genesis. Your framework will handle the laying out of your dynamic content in the drag and drop layout builder. And these frameworks have built-in systems for displaying your site on multiple devices from an iPhone to a desktop computer. Here's just a quick example of the Utheme Pro page builder built on the UIKit framework for both Joomla and WordPress. On the left, it shows the page builder functionality and on the right, some of the theme styling features. When you work in this framework, it doesn't feel like you're in either WordPress or Joomla. It feels like its own application. And that's because these CMS platforms allow for these frameworks to be installed on top of and integrate seamlessly within the CMS platform. Utheme Pro is just one of the great frameworks out there. There's a lot of other ones that are great as well. Now that you know the basics of these content management platforms, let's start comparing the most used CMS apps. Now the first one of these is called Joomla. It can be described as a flexible, powerful CMS with advanced content control, ideal for complex and multilingual websites. The next one is WordPress, a user-friendly CMS, ideal for blogs, business sites, and customization with thousands of themes and plugins. You may or may not have heard of these platforms, and if you want to start your passion project, side hustle, or enhance your current business, you might be wondering which one you should pick. Now, I'm not going to be telling you which one to pick, as I am on the side of open source, not any one particular application. I will hopefully be giving you all the information that you need to make your own informed decision. Now I need to stop right here and give you a bit of a notice, and that is that the information and counter arguments that are gonna be presented here may challenge your current beliefs and understanding about particular content management systems. And to help with this, I have my little friend, Devi. She's gonna be playing devil's advocate to bring some balance and enlightenment to our conversation. She'll be challenging the common overgeneralization that one content management system is better than another because it has more native features, that more sites use it, that there's a larger selection of plugins, or that it has a larger community. So I'm gonna be presenting information, then Debbie's gonna come in and give her two cents as we go along. So the first comparison that we're gonna go over is native features. And Joomla has roughly twice as many native features as WordPress. That means it's much more capable out of the box than WordPress is. Now, Debbie is going to step in here and point out that no one that uses either of these CMS platforms is going to be using just the native features, and she's right. 
Now, the amazing thing with these content management systems is that they act a lot like vanilla ice cream. It's the base that all the great toppings get added to. So in our case, plugins and extensions are our toppings to our vanilla CMS. The great thing about these toppings is that it extends the features of these platforms and more or less level out their feature sets. So in the end, you're getting a lot of the same functionality. Now, Davey's going to make the point here that the more extensions and plugins that you install on your CMS can introduce more compatibility and security issues. And that's right. If you stick with the core features, you're not going to have the same potential issues. Next, we're going to be looking at how many sites worldwide use these open source content management systems. And you can see that WordPress has significantly more websites in the world than any other content management system. Joomla comes in second at a little over 3 million. Drupal comes in at 1.7 million. And all other CMSs get put into one category and are almost at 1.3 million. Now you might come to the conclusion that more users equals a better platform, but Debbie's gonna come in here and provide us an alternative explanation, and that has to do with another statistic. There are organizations and governments that track the technical ability of populations, and to our best estimates, all current internet users can be categorized into two groups. I have labeled them here as more and less tech savvy. The less tech savvy have the basic technical skills of being able to navigate the internet and use common desktop applications, while the more tech savvy are comfortable with technology and can use more advanced applications, and some can even code. Now what's interesting about this distribution is that it looks very similar to our distribution on the number of different CMS sites in the world. WordPress has more sites installed than any other CMS. WordPress is also promoted as a uniquely easy and user-friendly application. Now, could it be that the popularity of WordPress has less to do with being better than it is that there's a really large, less tech-savvy population and that this population is more likely to gravitate towards an easier solution? Well, Devi thinks so, but clearly this is not the only factor. WordPress has also benefited from better marketing over the years, the snowball effect of a massive community momentum that's resulted in a pretty great ecosystem. We just talked about the amazing ability of content management systems to extend their core functionality with plugins and extensions and how these will more or less level out the feature sets of these platforms. Now let's compare the number of plugins and extensions. The Joomla extensions directory has roughly 8,000 extensions registered, while the WordPress plugin directory has over 55,000 plugins. Now those numbers might seem huge, but the reality is that there's only a small fraction of the total extensions and plugins that are actually maintained and useful. It's estimated that Joomla's usable extensions are in the lower hundreds, while WordPress's useful and maintained plugins are in the high hundreds. Debbie wants to get the last word in, so she adds that most people are only installing five to 30 plugins or extensions anyways. So how many of these extensions and plugins do you actually need? The last point that we wanna challenge here is that the larger community means a better platform. With a smaller community, it's true that you have less online training and tutorials, and there might be a gap in plugins or extensions. Now, if you utilize openappguide.com, we teach on many open source applications that people don't cover, and we offer clear guides on open source apps and plugins for your project so you can make sure that you have everything that you need to get your project set up and launch successfully. And at Open App Guide, we know that anyone can become tech savvy with a little bit of effort, and our goal is to help people along with that journey. And last thing to note on community size, there may be some third-party applications that you or your business uses that only offers plugins or extensions for one content management system. If this is critical to your workflow or a business function, then you're going to need to use that content management system that is supported by the third party. It's a good idea when choosing a CMS to work backwards from any constraints that you may have and choose your CMS that way. So let's review what we went over in this training and what we're gonna cover in the next video. We talked about what content management systems are, 
the concept of a front end and a back end to a CMS, the difference between static and dynamic pages, what template frameworks are, and to challenge the idea of what better is for a CMS. Up next, we're gonna be going over the Joomla and WordPress structure, the benefits and drawbacks to each of these platforms, and I have a video dedicated to demoing the features of each of these platforms. Both of these platforms are really powerhouses. No matter which one that you choose, I have a full course on how to install these open source content management systems on your own virtual private server. Why waste your time on trial and error when I show you each step to take and why? So go over to openappguide.com forward slash app hosting training. Let's get going on our next training video in the series.